used to be over 700 pair of shoes. eBay kind of suppresses old stores or inactive small stores. This to me is a lot of money sitting there doing nothing. What's up everyone? My name is Edin. Alongside with my beautiful wife Melinda, we run a six-figure resale business right here out of the beautiful state of Michigan. We primarily sell used shoes and clothes online for profit and that's how we pay our bills and our small staff. Welcome to a vlog. I wanted to start this vlog today because I want you guys to see what it's like kind of running, running this business from my point of view right now. It's uh, right before Thanksgiving, so th happy Thanksgiving for everyone that's watching this before or maybe slightly after. Uh, I really hope everyone has a really nice holiday season and spends a lot of time with loved ones as that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. Today I'm going to basically assume the role of a general laborer at the warehouse and uh, I laugh when I say that because there's this whole, um, what's it called, like this dream thing that people talk about where it's like, oh yeah, you run your own business and you're this and you're that and this title and you can work whatever hours you want. It's like, no, nah, it's not really all, it, it's not like that, at least at the beginning, right? There's a lot of grunt labor that needs to happen. I'm going to talk about two main uh, subjects today that I really hope you guys find valuable. Uh, one of them is we're going to talk about what to do with old inventory. And the other one we're going to talk about cash flow, right? Cash flow, old inventory, two subjects that resellers really, really, really need some help with. A lot of them, especially when you're getting started. And maybe some of you that have been doing this for a long time just need a reminder about how important cash flow is and what all that really means. We'll dive into those two subjects today. I'm going to start off my day by consolidating inventory. I'm doing um, row uh, P up here. If you don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to consolidating, please go watch our last video where I really, well, not the last, two videos ago, I went through and explained the entire inventory control system. I'll link that video somewhere here or down there somewhere. So go check that out if you really want to learn how to have an effective, efficient inventory system. So I just pulled all of the ones that I could reach for P. I got to move the ladder, obviously, that way. And I'm just going to consolidate my inventory. I just started, uh, so I got two empty boxes already. And I'm going to just keep going. We are listing 60 a day and roughly selling half of that every single day. So obviously, we're growing plus 30 items per day, which means we need space. And yesterday, I started the project of getting all this stuff hung and, and looked at and figured out. Melinda was here yesterday too, which was awesome. She stopped by with Jessica to surprise us. Uh, everyone here loved it because they got to play with Jessica, have a good time. And then Melinda was in here for a couple of hours working, which was uh, great. As you guys know, our schedules change, so she doesn't get to spend as much time here in the warehouse. She works basically full-time from home and making sure we're getting our 60 listings done every single day, making sure accounting is right, and I'm uh, working on some other projects uh, for the businesses. Forever grateful to have such a supportive partner um, that kicks butt at home uh, while I'm kicking butt here. And then uh, it's always just a, it's a treasure when we actually get to have her here with us because working with your wife is amazing. So this corner behind me now, that's, uh, you see this little, little area here? That's where the new racking is gonna go. I shoved all that stuff in that corner for a reason. I wanted it to block my ability to be able to progress because it needs to be done. And that's the first subject is old inventory. What to do with it. This pile of shoes right here used to be over 700 pair of shoes in our old inventory system that wasn't really a system at all. And we're down to this many, which seems like a lot, but it's not, trust me. And then there was like seven or eight bins here. I emptied them all yesterday and uh, started working through all that old inventory. So let's go look at that real quick. This is what's remaining uh, of the old inventory. Now this stuff here, I still have to go through piece by piece and see if it's listed, where it's listed, if it's listed, if it's not, and then I need to put it back into the process area or into the processing area. These ones right here are ones that uh, I found, I took down uh, from the old store. These three actually weren't even listed, so this is a cash flow trap. So between these three pieces, there's about 15 bucks of cash flow just sitting there, not making us any money. And then this stuff here, well, let's, let's kind of talk about it. Originally, our thought was, why don't we just let the old stuff fizzle out in the old store? But the problem with that is that eBay kind of suppresses old stores or inactive small stores. They really do. I don't know why, but... Uh, you know, we've had, oh, at the peak, we've had around 1,200 items in that old store. Now we're down to less than 470 or something like that, roughly. 
And um, originally, like I said, we were just going to let this old stuff sit and it'll sell eventually, but it's not moving and it's not selling. And there's a couple of reasons. One, the market changes some things, right? So value goes up and down. Two, we know a little bit more about clothing now, uh, late 2022, than we knew early January 2022, right? So now we can make some adjustments in pricing and shipping policies and return policies and all that good stuff to help move this stuff. Otherwise, it's just cash flow that's sitting there and it's strangling your business. How does cash flow relate to old stagnant inventory? Well, it's, it's quite simple, right? You went out and you spent money, you invested money into items that you thought were going to be profitable for you to sell online. All right, so let's say the cost is for easy math, let's call it $77, right? $77 you went out there and spent, and you, let's say you got, um, I don't know, 10 items. 10 items, 77 bucks, $7.70 a piece, no big deal, $77, not a lot of money, right? That stuff, let's say you didn't even process it, it ends up in your death pile. Obviously, it's not making you any money there. So now let's say you listed it, but maybe you weren't good at listing, so your titles aren't good, your description isn't good, your photos are blurry, your... Your item specifics aren't accurate. Uh, you think it's a man's, it's actually a woman. So there's a lot of mistakes you potentially made six or nine months ago that you know better now because you've learned, but you're ignoring those items. So that's $77 that could be worth over $500 or $400, $500 in gross. It's just sitting there collecting dust. It's not doing you any good. It's not good for your mental headspace and it's obviously taking up physical space. Instead of going and buying more stuff, to process because we love to go find stuff to, to sell, right? But we never actually sell it. This is a huge issue in the reseller community, AKA the term death pile that everyone talks about. Now you're strangling your cash flow and you're not making any money and you're actually working for free because the stuff that is selling is just paying off the stuff that's sitting. Does that make sense? You're not, you're not in the net positive because your old inventory is holding your cash. Why do we allow this to happen is, is really wild, right? So let's do something about it. So I encourage you guys, New Year's is around the corner. Make a New Year's resolution. Hey, every single day, starting January 1st, I'm going to take one item, one, the oldest item in my store, just one, not five, not 20, one item. And I'm going to look back at it and figure out what is it worth? Is my listing good? Do I need to update it? Do I need to take it down? Is it actually worth what I think it's worth? Do I need to change the price? Just one a day, one a day will increase your cash flow, fix that old stuff. We're going to power through it a little bit faster. We're going to do a lot more than one a day. As you know, we process roughly 500, 600, 500, 600 units per week. So we can't really do one a day because we have a small staff and we have the support and the space to do it. So we're doing a bunch of them. In fact, on Tuesday night, I did 18 pairs of jeans. I took them all down from the old store. I retook all the photos, all the measurements and relisted them from scratch in a new store. Yesterday, we did another, it was roughly 40 units from the old store. So basically what I'm saying is that we're taking out all of the clothing in our old original Hustle & Hook store. We're taking all those listings down and then we're reprocessing them and putting them in the new store just to make sure that that stuff actually moves. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please ask questions below in the comment section. I'm, I'm happy to answer as many as possible. I'm going to go ahead and get back to work consolidating that row so I can get P off the ground. I'll check in when I'm done with that and show you the progress. After that, I'm going to keep working on that uh, rack over there of stuff that was just sitting dormant in the old store, not selling and uh, processing that. And hopefully midday towards the end of today i'm going to start building some racking so i'll definitely include you guys in all of that progress stay tuned i'm back doing the old ebay listings project now and i really want to drive this cash flow problem home this death pile problem home with you guys so i'm gonna put pen to paper and kind of draw out what i'm talking about i just found a piece it's this one right here this j crew piece this was listed in 2020. Let me show you the listing. So it was listed for $37 free shipping, which is above market. October 22nd, 2020. And here's the like original way we did pictures in our house. You know, uh, it's it stinks because it's redundant. Uh, the work we've already done, so we have to do it all over again. But at the same time, the stuff has been sitting for over two years and not making us any money. So let me just do a quick example. Let's do a count. We got... One, two, three, four, six, seven, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 
55. 55 pieces. Okay, so 55 pieces. Let's say they're worth um, $4 a piece is what we bought them for. Let's just say that's true. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to look back at the old spreadsheet. But let's call it $4. That's $220. That's doing nothing for me. That's $220 that's just sitting there. $220. I don't know what your death pile looks like, but $220 to me is a lot of money sitting there doing nothing. Thing. So to me, the natural question then is, why would I go out and spend more money on inventory when I have inventory already that's just sitting here doing nothing for me? So I'm not. I'm going to take that $220 roughly investment. It's probably even more than that because if you add 6% tax on top of that, you're talking another 13, 14 bucks and we probably paid like closer to 6 or $7 for some of the higher end stuff. So you're probably talking closer to like $250, 260 so instead of me going and spending another $250 and then saying, well, how come I'm not making any money reselling? I'm going to use the stuff that I already have, get it into the new, more vibrant, active store, get it relisted with better photos, better titles, better pricing, things that we've learned over the years, right? Especially in the last six to nine months, just doing clothes and shoes. Utilize all those tools and techniques to give this stuff a chance and actually sell it instead of just accumulating more and spending more and more and more and more. That's the whole point. I really hope that makes sense to you guys. Uh, if Again, if it doesn't, please comment below. Maybe give some more of your own examples or maybe just share the honest truth about your own reselling business and your death pile so that other people can say, well, at least I'm not the only one that has to deal with it and then make a change today of how you're going to tackle that stuff. This is what's left of the uh, the quote unquote death pile. So I'm gonna simply look all these up, make sure that they're all listed, not listed, what's going on with them and um, get them processed or rejected or whatever so they're not, they're not just taking up space. As far as the other stuff, uh, we've identified seven or eight of them that weren't even listed. So that's all been processed again or at least put into processing. And I'm making progress here with ILP or row P, but there's a problem. And the problem is that I noticed there's a bunch of them in a row with no gaps around them. Let me tell you what I mean. Typically, when we have a bunch of stuff that we just listed because we're listing 60 a day, we'll sell stuff within the first day or two. And usually, let's say we start at 100 and we have 100 through 160, usually a couple will sell within the first days and then we're gonna get gaps. Well, every time that I consolidate, when I notice that there's no gaps, I'm always like, why? Why is there no gaps? And in this case, as you can see by this footage, there's a bunch of them in a row, like 15 or 20 of them, and it's like, how come none of these sold? These are really nice pieces. There's some really good brands, some vintage Levi's, so on and so on. There might be a problem. So I'm going to look into that and see what happened. Maybe these files were never shared. Maybe the photos were never uploaded. Maybe the VA didn't complete their assigned tasks. Something happened. So I'm going to look into that because that's a lot of money. Speaking of cash flow, right? That's just sitting there. If that's 20 pieces times 5 bucks a piece, that's another $100. That's just sitting there not making us any money, which is a problem. Finished consolidating, you can see this is how many boxes of P were empty. And obviously, uh, I have to just restock it all now. We did have about six of them that were overflow, so we got those all nice and condensed. And now this entire row goes back up. In the middle of all this stuff that I'm already working on, I'm also supplying our photographers. As you can see, uh, they're steady at it. Uh, we just got a huge shipment of shoes in that we photographed or cleaned first and photographed. And of course, tons and tons and tons of clothing. So it's important for me as the task manager to make sure that I'm supplying um, those two so that they can keep going and not stop and go, stop and go. The more of one thing you can do continuously, the better productivity you're going to have overall. I just verified those listings that I brought up earlier. In fact, they're not listed and I know what happened. One of the VAs that we had early on quit. That work was assigned to her. She didn't complete that portion and I messed up and I didn't transfer it to another VA. So good thing we found the mistake. Bad thing, that's 55 listings that we did all the work for but never got listed. So that part is not good. Um, so we're gonna have to pull all that, get it back to the rotation, get photos of it do it again. It is what it is. I talked about this in the inventory control video, but this is how easy it was for me to find that mistake. See P88, 87, 84 are all here. Notice these natural gaps between 81 and 84 and 84 through 87. Those are already sold, which makes sense. And again, my suspicion was why are these all in a row and none of them have sold? 
we can see here P88 was listed and then the next one is P39 so there's that huge gap of 54, 55 items that were un unlisted now we have to do them again. If you're still contemplating if you should have an alphanumerical or numerical system for a custom SKU for eBay, I hope this is proof enough that it has a lot more benefits and almost no downsides. Here it is visually, 55 pairs of jeans. If we paid $6 on average for all of them, which those are kind of typical retail Goodwill prices, that's another $333 that are holding up cash flow. Just between those two examples, that's well over $550 of cash, strapped, choking, not doing anything for us. We're not making our money work for us. Our money instead is just sitting there and rotting if we're not catching these mistakes and redoing the things that need to be redone. Even though it sucks, it's a lot of repeat work, but it has to get done. Why would I go and spend $550 on new inventory when I have $550 of inventory sitting here collecting dust? wanted to take a minute just to explain what I'm actually doing here with this pile of shoes, especially for some of the resellers that are, you know, pretty new at this. What I'm doing is basically going through all of them to re-inventory them, to put them in, in that inventory system you see behind us. Because th these are, again, these are listings from a year and a half ago, a year ago from our house that we never put into the new system. Most of them we did. Also, what I'm doing is I'm actually checking that they've been listed. So, for example... These pair of Nike tennis shoes and these pair of Brooks Ghosts, they are not even listed. So they're in this death pile, not making us any money, constricting our cash flow for no reason, just because we never got to them. So those two, I'm going to get into back in the processing room so we can get them processed and listed. This pile here, I just ended all of these listings. These are all listed in an appropriate store, but I'm ending them for two reasons. Reason number one, I want them to basically look like brand new listings in the algorithm of eBay. So I'm going to take them down, relist them, but I'm actually going to fix all the listings, make sure that the titles are good, the price is good, and so on. Right off the bat, I've noticed with the ones that I've taken down, the pricing on them is what's wrong. We, again, back in January, had a different understanding of the used shoe market than we do now. So a lot of them are between $7 and $15 above actual value. And so we're going to take them down, we're going to relist them, make sure that all the policies are correct, that we are offering free returns, that offers are on, all that good stuff. Otherwise, again, they're just going to sit here and collect dust and not make us any money. So I'm going to continue doing this for a little while. I have uh, Ali in there working on that uh, project of uh, those 55 listings that never got listed because of my error. So she's hanging them, redoing all of that right now. Which again, it sucks because that's roughly two late, maybe hour and a half of work, two hours of work max that we lose out on, right? We are now paying for an additional two hours of labor because we made a mistake. But again, it's much better to catch the mistake, redo it, than it is not to do anything about it. So I urge you, go look at your old listings, go look at stuff that hasn't been moving. eBay is notorious for taking down listings at random, but also we as humans make mistakes and you may have thought you listed it and never listed it. And again, it's not making you any money and it's really part of your death pile instead of part of your listed inventory. Several hours have actually passed since the last clip. I uh, took a little dinner break, uh, came back, it's now just past midnight and it's time to go home. So in conclusion, I, I want to wrap this video up. Uh, I did make a decent dent on the shoes. I'm happy that I pulled all those clothing items and got those uh, relisted, re-inventoried, all that good stuff. We made a lot of progress today, which is awesome. As, as usual, you have to make progress, uh, but you have to look back at all the stuff that you spend money on and figure out why it's not making you any money and do something about it. Otherwise, again, you are restricting your cash flow and that's not good for any business. I hope this video brought you some value, some joy. I really hope it um, at least uh, it gave you some ideas of things that could potentially go wrong as far as Again, constricting cash flow and not getting your money back for things that you thought you're going to flip. Take action, take care of that stuff one a day, you know, if, if you can't do much more than that, but those old listings deserve your attention. Until next time, I appreciate you watching. Take care.